Hi, how's it? In the name of Christ, how you doing? It's your girl, Cran Cake Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Today is the 17th of March, 2024. Uh, yeah, recording on the right side of the day. So, yes. But I am still kind of inundated. Anywho, anyhow, uh, rocking all this on the top of the head because I'm moisturizing the hair. There's a plastic bag underneath. Uh, not that you want to know. Anyway, caveats, let me just put them out there, kindly look out for them down below, highly likely, probably not up there, but anyway, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're not always accurate, they sometimes use a small G for God, they're not very reverential, that's not me, I didn't plan it that way, but I like them there because they're cute, so we keep them. Secondly, um, I'll edit them one day, God willing. Secondly, um, makeup. I'm very potentially wearing application makeup, if I am, you'll know, because it's going to be bouncing up and down, don't worry, I'm not shape-shifting. And then I have a segment, um, oh wow. Wow, I'm absolutely loving my new skincare regime. I did not even plan on changing. There's this place where I buy products and sometimes I go there and they've discontinued my thing. So I got a new toner and I'm just so hydrated. I can see it on my face. Like, ooh. anyway, I have a segment. I've just taken a shower now. I don't like touching my face after bathing because I just feel like it's just counterproductive. But anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me, oh yo yo, ho ho, you a ho. Don't take a jab at me, oh yo, ho ho ho. Please don't take a jab at me. Moving on, okay. Righto, cool beans and bananas, boom. The intention is to flush my cheeks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Doesn't really matter, I don't care, whatever. Just like, don't don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Ugh, anyway, moving on, let's just get straight to it. Um, I don't wanna be long. I like saying I don't wanna be long and then I become long. I don't want to be. I am ish, y'all, ish, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm super sad, you know, like. All the time i don't know i don't know when this is ever gonna stop never mind like this was i had another horrible dream about my ex-boyfriend but i'm not gonna talk about it because it's just worthless okay it it's it's entirely worthless to rap on about stuff that i have conquered i'm conquering but it's after me i just i feel bad for him that's all that is presently important that's what happens when you put yourself in a position to afflict everybody or to afflict anybody you make yourself an addict to that person so let's just move on let's talk about what happened today i actually did a whole bunch of shorts earlier about it uh that you'll see in the future as you all know i batch record in advance okay so i went to chinatown and i was going there to go and purchase what do you call this thing? Like what I needed. I needed like Tona. I needed to replenish stuff. So I went and I'm always so grieved when I go out there. I don't like going out there. I prefer like, yeah, people have made me hate the public arena. But anyway, whatever. That's just South Africa. That's just my, my issue, my thing as well with the South Africa that you have manufactured uh, and created a nasty little ecosystem out of it. Uh, it's just really, very, very, very unfortunate that you lack tranquility. You lack peace and respect for your own country. But anyway, whatever. There's quite a few observations that I made. A lot of the time I feel terrible because I'm in the midst of people that are carrying on with life while I'm not living. And that makes me uncomfortable. Just that alone. Like you don't have to go out of your way to make me feel like trash. I just feel like trash just by mere virtue of being in a public society where people are living out their lives and just doing what they're doing. I hate that because I've been extracted from normal life. But anyway, mm, another story for another day then. That's the first thing. But then there are observations that I make. So it is currently the 17th of March and uh, there's nothing that reminds me about impending holidays other than just a lot of advertisement concerning it. I don't have a life so for those reasons I don't really look forward to a long weekend. I don't look forward to anything that regular folk look forward to. Um, so I get reminded by ads. And when I was out in the wilderness today, I saw billboards. Uh, yeah, billboards, you guys, on the street, in the streets, on the, on Hendrik Wotrider, billboards. Mm. And I also saw other things, and let's just enter into discussion about that, seeing as we have to say something every day. Uh, the judged state, the judged state of the nation is evidenced in the way that it's presently uh, rolling. 
certain things might seem like oh, well, that's always been happening but in increasing measure uh south africans just absolutely disregarding their christianity when you don't push back against a like a, a flagrant uh, affront on your god as a christian in a christian country he, of course you're going to get stepped on the toe off on the toes off and there's just going to be this like crazy apostasy that then follows where people just for the sake of being comfortable are going to ignore uh just flagrant blasphemies against their king if you don't stand for christ he won't stand for you it's that basic if you deny him before men he will deny you before the father yet again very basic anyway so on my way back from chinatown actually it was yeah it was it was it was all just coming back really that slapped me silly because going i was in a rush too much in a rush to look anyway coming back i was a lot more relaxed i'm always in a rush but you know some rushes are all rushes are equal but some rushes are more equal than others my rush there was more equal no my rush yeah there was more equal than the rush coming back anyway whatever moving on so I, I was observant. There was this giant billboard on Hendrik Bodhiter of this man, this white man, uh, wearing an Alice band that was in the that had what do you call this like bunny ears bunny ears an alice band that had bunny ears on it and then there were all different kinds of other image there was all dif all different kinds of other imagery on that billboard in the form of shape of eggs and stuff like that chocolate and the board post the print on the large huge wrote easter 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 is here this stuff has been happening for a minute true story but understand where i'm coming from or at least hopefully by the time we're done speaking here we're going to be on the same page i am a south african i have been this country from as far back as i could remember has been a christian country and very unfortunately from literally also as far back as i can remember that's always been easter i however am only having qualms with it now because of my superb consecration to jesus christ and also my exquisite persecution which also makes me then make inferences about why it is even that i am so persecuted as a christian in a christian country all that is evidently occurring because of a, po a, a, a gangrene and apostasy that has been spreading for literally so long that at this point absent of an amputation of some kind of limb there is no salvaging of south africa it's like they've left the gangrene to spread deep and far okay for way too long for there to be complete recovery as in 100 turnaround at this point if the if the structures in question are going to survive you guys uh they're gonna survive maimed they're gonna survive severed amputated it's written in god's word that it is better to enter heaven maimed than to go to hellfire with all of your body parts intact at this point south africa has got to maim itself if it's going to be embraced by god again because right now it's so sodomic it is just so at the precipice of final judgment that <laughs> yo like the, it's like Nineveh it's probably like Nineveh it will inevitably face a severity of judgment if it does not have a miraculous turnover like a miraculous turnover like what happened in Nineveh like a king declaring a fast for an entire country and everybody there doing a better thing it's highly unlikely to happen that thing and yet it happened in the day of Jonah because that's just what happens when miracles happen that's what God does sometimes he makes an impossible thing actually possibly occur so the the, the gangrene is so far gone in this country that absent of a Nineveh type repentance we're done for and the thing about a country being done for is it's a gradual decline i spoke in my shorts about how south africa is going to end up like haiti and that was a prophecy that god gave me these things take time but the beginning stages of them and also the intermediary stages of them are evident and south africa's already got all the marking makings of a failed state it's just overt it's clear there is a lot of selfishness a lot of um incontinence a lot of impetuousness uh, a, a, a lack of regard for fellow man just a, a vain glory and an ambition that is so effervescent that they're properly willing like little animals 
people in this country they're prepared to just shove everybody out the way just to get ahead and wow like literally it takes a village to raise a child so when then you are shooting down all the village men one by one to get ahead who's gonna raise the children like i'm just saying like a country is made up of its individual citizens so when when you afflict one south african you might as well just add a multiplier to that and recognize that you're afflicting us all because somebody like you is doing that to somebody out there else like your victim it just has this mushrooming effect this exponential growth of this gangrenous spread covering a whole entire surface area of a country in a much shorter space of time than ever anticipated the country is in a free fall and it's going to end up being a failed state and where it is that we find ourselves right now is not the beginning of the end it appears to me like it might be either the intermediary intermediary and in the worst case scenario literally the end of the end for south africa it's been a gangrene that's been spreading for a minute because like i said i'm a south african and i've been born here i was born here i've been raised all my life in this place i wasn't always christian and i've always just spent easter not doing anything godly even though i went to catholic schools in the beginning really and truly it was a pagan holiday more than it was a christian one in a christian country and there was no other like literally there wasn't an uprising by the body of christ to lament about the desecration of their holiday until such time that everybody swung like sia on a chandelier on our holiday i still don't know i still don't have solid conviction however i am prepared to learn as to whether or not easter is truly the death of jesus christ and all that jazz that is not however relevant what's relevant is that if at all you do believe that it is if if this date that has been set apart for such a date a day as that if you really do believe that that's what it is you should have a, a lot you, like proper a, a whole bunch of you should be coming forward on easter and saying this is sacrilege it's sacrilege they should be saying this is blasphemous religious folk in the country that live in a christian country that have a right to protect this country's heritage in that regard or stand up and placard against the heinous desecration of this day this time of the year for from its origins what it is that it is intended to do we are the only reason why we even celebrate it as a country is because we are a professing christian country but it has been so desecrated and for so long that it only took me getting born again to realize just how far the gangrene has spread because it's always been like this for me let's first talk about the gentleman the white gentleman on the billboard on hendrik Potrider. i mean goodness by the time you watch this video if you at all are watching it uh it will yet be easter it, it will yet the, the date that is um that long holiday long weekend whatnot will yet be around uh, so you can go and drive on Hendrik Bodrider if you live in this neighborhood in Johannesburg and look search for this billboard it's somewhere between the McDonald's on Hill Fox and that builder's warehouse yeah that like stretch of road between the builder's warehouse Nando's uh turn on Hendrik Bodrider and the Hill Fox, Hill Fox McDonald's turn that stretch of road the billboard is there go and check it out yourselves you guys uh probably you won't even have to go all the way to Hendrik Potriter. probably whoever it is that put that ad there has enough millions to spend on btl and atl advertising to probably be in santon and in pretoria and everywhere so it's probably just like hovering around the streets of all of johannesburg that billboard is this white gentleman with an alice band with bunny ears on it and all different kinds of other imagery there eggs and whatnot eggs okay like eggs and uh, like chocolate eggs as well as the word easter um yeah advertising i don't know what but they're definitely advertising something about easter and there is absolutely no reference even in the slightest on that chunky big billboard on a long stretch of road in a christian country nothing of that misinformation about what easter is about was ever highlighted as an issue raised as a cause for concern it is literally the biggest and baddest example of misinformation false advertising because that's literally not what easter is 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 it's literally what it's not supposed to be it's it's not bad like how you go like easter easter okay and then there's like no reference to jesus no reference to church service on sunday or thursday or friday or saturday no reference just something about easter eggs and and a very effeminate man wearing a, a girly paraphernalia on the on his head an alice band so one of two things was uh, one of many things was happening then the first was the fact that it, it's not about easter eggs and it's not about uh bunnies 
okay? The second was, you had to go and take a man and put him as the face of that advert instead of a woman or a child. They decided to go and put an Alice band on a man that, like, it was obvious, it was extremely effeminate, that whole billboard. It, like, you literally notice the Alice band first before you realize that it's a bunny rabbit Alice band. You first see female headgear on a man and the first thing you're thinking is lgbtqia plus until you look further up and realize that oh it's bunny ears so not only has south africa declined in well all along it's just been doing easter eggs for easter and not jesus but now it's also alongside it subliminally messaging down our throats the colorful community agenda Tran like drag that that was a a man in drag even though it was just the face that was on the billboard he was clearly a man in drag and his drag outfit was this girly bunny rabbit ear thing so that is the effeminizing of an entire country all right mixed with the holiday that is supposed to commemorate jesus christ whether or not it's the actual right date for god's birth is at this point not relevant because i'm making a different point so have mercy on me i do believe and these people on youtube that keep on rapping on about how it is that this is not really the birth of christ it's a pagan holiday i agree with them to a certain extent but for the larger majority of human beings that call themselves christians they're unlearned in this regard they don't have conviction in that regard and so for those reasons they thoroughly think that it's the birth of jesus and all that jazz that particular date and so they ought if at all they're standing for jesus christ and they believe that that date is supposed to commemorate his birth you know whatever it is that that stands on your conscience run with it that's what the bible has to say if your if your conscience is uncomfortable you you must basically straighten it you know yeah type establishment thing run with your conscience you know that scripture where it is that it's written about uh, eating food that you're not sure what's going on here if your conscience is clear eat the food but if it's not clear then for the sake of your conscience don't eat the food so similarly to your ignorance about this not really being the birth of jesus or the death of jesus christ that on its own clears your conscience from celebrating a pagan holiday all right but with your conscience being clear you however still have a responsibility to stand for godliness do you understand and when then your nation is calling itself a christian country with christian hum with, with human rights across the board be you christian or not being a thing and then they just come and they lamp based your faith in a country that claims to be your faith you get to stand up and say this is sacrilege and i promise if enough south africans christians if, if enough south african christians had actually stood long ago about the the infiltration of all of these pagan practices into easter if they had raised it as an issue as an affront to their faith we would have been heard because if at all you assault anything within the religion of islam and somebody raises it it caught co like enough noise is spoken on the rooftops people are gonna stop people are gonna stop they're gonna win a case at the equality court and then people are gonna stop blaspheming the god of of of, of, of the muslims they're gonna stop like literally you people get to raise cases they get heard in this country and then the issue in question corrected so if enough christians had basically highlighted that we feel like this is blasphemous it's sacrilege and we stood on christ and not this pagan hol the, well this pagan practice within what would be a christian holiday hmm. this would have stopped long ago it would have been nipped in the bud like believers are not lamenting as they ought and so your countries are becoming increasingly watered down if you stand for nothing you will fall for everything and if you don't hold fast to your godly human rights in a country that has m declared itself a christian nation you will over time start to lose the protections that you have as christians it's written in god's word that the world hates disciples okay and that they are going to endure us through persecution if we want to live a life in godliness but god also says that if they persecute you in one time you must flee to the next dust your feet or shake the dust from your feet it'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and of Sodom and Tyre than it will be for that town so the Lord has a thing about leaving an environment that is too hostile for Christians however he has also made it clear that it is possible to live at peace with certain environments if it is possible live at peace with your fellow man so where it is that the gospel has been preached in this world Christians have prospered to foster peace so as to minimize persecution if the Lord says that they persecute you in one time flee to the next he implied in so speaking that it was possible to go somewhere where it was less hostile to the gospel that where people are a lot more receptive of you that he has created safe hubs in this world where it is that you'll be able to be fruitful multiply fill the earth and occupy it while making disciples of all nations he made it thoroughly possible for us christians to live at peace in our countries instead of just enduring 
an extremity of persecution just 24 hours a day. Otherwise, the gospel would not have spread as it presently has. It would not have gone to where it needed to go. Nations like South Africa, like the US, would never have risen from the ground if this persecution guaranteed us in John 15 was just ongoing with no reprieve. The Lord, in so stating that if the persecution in one town fleets the next, implied that it is possible to be at peace within your gospel ministry, within your gospel stature, within a Christian state. That's what I'm getting at. Where you are at. Therefore, you have no idea what under heaven you have been blessed with. As a Christian living in a country that all of it calls itself Christian, you have no clue how much it took for your forefathers in the faith to establish those human rights in your country because it does not come naturally for, Christ, for countries to be Christian. Given that the world hates disciples, that they throw us out of synagogues, that they divide themselves from us, that they can't stand God. We are born hating God. No one chooses God. And so when an entire country, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, no one comes to the Father, to the Son, unless the Father draws him. So when a country entirely, all the way up to the level of government, has declared itself a Christian country, that is a massive success for the gospel message. It is a feat that Christians don't quite understand. You are taking it for granted. You, you literally don't know what you have because your country, I guarantee you right now, has not always been Christian. We have been evangelized and countries successfully converted until our forefathers who were abused and killed for the faith succeeded in that blood of the martyrs being the seed of the church. They succeeded to convert an entire country. And so when you easily can flail a Bible everywhere you go, when you can have 10 of them in your house, 10 in your car, 10 in the office, 10 in your kids' shoes, when you can just speak Jesus, when you can have a bumper sticker for Christ on your car, in your country, you have like proper, you are among the most blessed people on the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called sons of God. Those are people who go into lands, missionaries, and they cause peace between Christians and unbelievers. A, a, a state that according to John Matthew 10, or like is going to come with great difficulty because the Lord has come upon the earth not to bring peace but a sword, division between Christians and not. Two will be against one in a household. Two will be against three, sorry, in a household. So when then your country is Christian, <laughs> you've conquered the sword. You have literally won a battle that many countries in the world are not quite getting around to winning. Look at the Middle East. Look at converts to Christianity there. Look at Nigeria. It's like there's a split it's right down the center, 50-50. Christian and Islam. And there is so much bloodshed, carnage of Christians in that country with there being a half and half split. So what that means is that South Africa does not have a half and half split. It has more like a 70 to 80% versus 30% split. It's like Christian 70% and then the rest is other. The rest is everything else that they could potentially be. You have no idea what that means for you when you have that. And so seeing as it took so much blood, sweat and tears to win that, to foster that, to achieve that in your country long ago, from long ago, from your forefathers, seeing as it became, it, it was that much of a striving to get that status quo in your country. The fact that ain't nobody out there trying to protect it. Ain't nobody out there trying to coddle it, preserve it. Ain't nobody out there trying to put it in a museum with lasers around it, making sure that nobody steals it. The fact that Christians are not working in Christian countries, tooth and dog, tooth, but tooth and nail. The fact that they're not working like dogs to preserve the Christian heritage of their countries is bizarre. It is bizarre. Have you guys heard of Nero? Have you? Have you? Have you guys heard of Jehoiakim? Have you? Have you? Have you guys heard of the Pharaoh, not of Joseph, but of Moses? Have you? Have you? Do you guys know what happens to God's people in a land that is hostile against them? We are speaking genocide, holocaust. Have you guys heard of Hitler? Like, if God's be <laughs> So fine, Jews are not Christian, but you get my point. What I'm trying to explain to you guys is that the liberties that you have in your countries to be Christian are so easily taken for granted that you are about to find out in the worst way, in the great tribulation that shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have mixed Christianity with witchcraft, with ancestral worship. I shouldn't have taken for granted this beautiful pearl of great price. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have just let Easter come and go with people eating a whole bunch of Easter eggs and praising bunnies. I shouldn't have let Christmas come and go with people cutting up some green trees. I shouldn't have let people go on right ahead and do all that sacrilege, all that blasphemy against God. Because there, it was a time when there were so many human rights for my kind of people in my country that if only we had just raised it, they would have stopped. Because it was indeed an infringement on our human rights and a devastating misinformation about what this particular holiday is about. The Great Tribulation, every time I think about the Great Tribulation, the Lord gives me the 
favorite scene in the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. I believe it could be Dead Man's Chest, the second one that starts with Jack Sparrow basically fa facing the gallows. All right. And there are all these pirates thanks to it's it's not Commodore Norrington, but Lord Beckett. Lord Beckett is this guy that's raised up that basically declares war on the pirates and he makes a determination to kill all of them off like a whole pirate genocide, like a whole pirate holocaust. OK, and these pirates are queuing in snake like queues literally marching towards the gallows as they're being hung four by four four by four and they're singing the song ho ho da 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 never shall we die yeah it starts with this very macabre scene of pirates queuing to their death and there's nothing they can do and people who belong to uh port uh whatever the name of that town is are watching this like a whole spectacle watching people getting murdered and these pirates are many ultimately jack sparrow is up next to be hung with three other people and of course he survives because like you know it's jack sparrow type thing but every single time I, I i try to imagine the troubles that are coming in the tribulation the lord always flash visions me with that scene from pirates of the caribbean and it is to communicate to me that Christians are going to be like those pirates. They're going to be singing hymns as they are queuing in snake-like queues while people are watching them get sent one by one to the gallows. But instead of it being the gallows, it's going to be like a guillotine. And their heads are going to get chopped off. But in the run-up too, they're going to be singing Never Shall We Die. But instead of it being Never Shall We Die, it's ideal that that song is actually... Uh, the, the the theme song because never shall we die is true true but like they'll be singing like amazing grace how sweet the sound or some hymn hymn some christian songs as they are blank faced looking like mindless drones queuing to be killed with their heads being collected in front of crowds of people watching saying they had it coming yeah that is the culmination of disregarding disrespect of your faith in your countries. That's what it ends up at. It, it causes such a watering down of your, your faith that eventually people kill you for disagreeing with them. Because now you are not, there, there, there aren't enough of you. You are severely outnumbered and the devil has taken over entirely because you allowed a pagan culture to get increasingly magnified the proportion of its influence over your country week on week year on year just gets so big that at some point our voices start start to become like whimpers our voices start to become like whispers our voices are no longer boisterous audible in a way that uh, makes us i guess forces to be reckoned with anymore forces to be reckoned with anymore no longer are our voices that thing and when then you are this little tiny whimper in like a, a circus of people that feel entitled albeit being utterly wrong they're they're wrong but they're entitled and they're many and so there's no fighting them you're gonna get killed despite being the only one that's right because you made it such that you would eventually get outnumbered because unfortunately safety is in numbers according to the standards of this world and when people start to make an observation that you are not safe they will not follow you and so the lack of safety for christians is inspired by the lack of preparedness to stand for christian virtue for christian principles by christians such that upon getting watered down the world is following that grain and the one fervent person that decides to stand for what is right is so like hey 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 hey, hey, hey. no 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 is so terribly outnumbered that that person is so terribly outnumbered that uh, again, they will get killed and also get, they will get considered as naive to think that they're going to actually get hurt. They're going to be considered brave unnecessarily. Like, why are you making yourself a hero? Like, stop. And if they're at all, they, they, they don't want to stop rapping on for their viewpoint, for their vantage point. It will become so much easier to just neutralize them with a sword, won't it? You are bringing your own genocide, Christians, in South Africa. You're bringing your own holocaust. Because Nero is just five seconds away in Rome. Nero, when he was raised up, was he was raised up at a time when Christianity was basically easily practiced practiced sorry flourishing it like people could do what they wanted to do until one day because of the threat to the emperor position because if at all we're going to be dealing with a king that is unseen is he not going to then compete with me as emperor when they saw that as a threat 
Nero was then like, neutralize them because there's only one king here, me. There's only one emperor here, me. So basically Christianity became outlawed. When you don't stand, like people like those get to a point where they make an observation that not enough people are Christian. And so I can actually massacre everyone that is threatening my authority and seeing as the devil has had all of these little mini antichrists all throughout history just like Nero wanting to take over power from the god of the universe it will therefore also come as no surprise it should not anyway come as no surprise to you when ultimately when you have filed down enough christians and there's only five of us left in the country when it starts to become acceptable to severely restrict the rights of christians in the country i am just a foreshadowing my biblical christianity has cost me an entire life i actually the the, the thing that i started saying when i started speaking here was that i hate going out there because south africans are ignoring that i don't have a life and i also hate going out there because of the fact that I am like basically I've just been so disenfranchised that everything hurts that never used to be me that never used to be my life but I became a biblical Christian and unbiblical Christians saw me as this outnumbered sore thump that could just be squashed because I made them uncomfortable yeah type of people to take an Easter egg in their stride around Easter type of people to take a Christmas tree in their stride like I don't even understand why Christians even have Christmas trees in their houses what does that have to do with Jesus you guys like I just it, it, that's the thing it did not it, it dawned on me only when i came to christ that but why 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 as a christian i couldn't believe even at ray oh guys i attended rayma church and that was the first church that i was a part of and they would have christmas decorations around christmas guys one minute at rayma they had christmas decorations around christmas um they had easter games and festivities for children in the church in the uh sunday schools that were not christian um and then there was there's something that is skipping my mind oh yeah valentine's day this one really got to me because i've never celebrated valentine's day even when i was in the world i just thought it was a dumb day Nje. whatever like my boyfriend and i would just like it was just another day like yeah whatever right uh, not because it was pagan or i just thought it was kind of corny like really no other reason i thought it was corny so i've never been a fan of valentine's day but then when i came to christ i got convicted that there, there's uh, uh, like um, demonic origins to it plus valentine's day unlike easter and valentine's day unlike christmas has absolutely nothing to do with jesus it's not a christian holiday even in the slightest yeah and i was shocked out of my mind to go to church one sunday in the run-up to a valentine's day it could have been maybe two days prior to valentine's day and i was at church on sunday and the pastor was preaching on the the, the day of love that is coming that is valentine's day and i was like how is this man at the pulpit preaching about valentine's day i was looking around in a church and i was being preached to about valentine's day top of that there were all these red balloons in the church in the shape of hearts like strewn on the floor just the, at the bottom there of the podium or whatever as forms of decoration to make us all feel nice you know and i guess entertained mm. there were all these valentine's decorations and there were people wearing pretty much valentine's gear like you know like you could tell that they had told them wear a white dress and a red bow tie or a red alice band on your head just to basically uh, work with the theme of valentine's day the staff at the church was like that uh and and for me it's like whoa 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 i yeah, guys there was there were so many funny weird things happening at rayma that that's just what exactly happens in a christian country when christians they're in are just mixing with the world i also i was new in the faith so because i was new in the faith i i did not think much of it but it did make me crease my forehead because unlike easter and unlike christmas i knew that valentine's day had nothing to do with christianity so that was weird for me and then whitney houston passes away right she died and the preacher at, at, at my church the lead ray mccauley thoroughly preached on whitney houston's uh heavenly heaven state like her not basically he preached on her being home he's like he like yeah he literally dedicated that sunday sermon to speaking to preaching about whitney houston having finally gone home to god and he did not mention her name but he kept on talking about one of our 
own is gone and the world is in shock because she has passed away but i would love to comfort you and let you know that she's resting with jesus the woman died from a drug overdose in a bathtub and by the time she passed away she had fled run she had separated herself so far from god that she could not reliably be called a christian hey the woman had a song in her career called saving all my love and it was about adultery and the one yeah um, your love is my love if tomorrow was judgment day and i'm standing at the front line and the lord asked me what i did with my life i would say i spent it with you that's a woman that's been in the bible knowing that judgment day has nothing to do with god asking you such things as those in any level of calmness when you have lived a separated life from him all of it the last thing that you would say at the great white throne judgment with the lord asking you what you did with your life is i spent it with another mere mortal sinning against you plus god is not going to be asking you what you did with your life books are going to be opened and you're going to be told what you did with your life and then judged from there that's a woman that was in the word of god at some point in her life singing gospel music in churches that had so tarried from biblical veracity that she could not even in her music thoroughly portray biblical events like judgment day and then of course she glorified adultery in one of her songs and there's many more many more yeah that's what happens when christianity mixes with the world and you think that you can continue to live such a carnal earthly worldly lifestyle and not have your christianity eventually exsanguinated like as an, a vampire draining blood out of your blood your stream your system draining the life out of you you can't expect that the faith that is keeping your countries peaceful that is keeping your countries with human rights and with democracies and civilized you can't expect that it's going to be maintained when the thing that brought the peace about has been tarried from when christianity true biblical christianity has been tarried from that's what gave your nation's democracy that's what gave your nation's peace the canon of your country's your legislation founded on christian principles that's why you have a bill of rights that's why that's why etc but when you think that you can have your bread buttered on both sides and mix god with all of these pagan practices understand god is not a respecter of persons he is not a respecter of persons he is therefore also not a respecter of countries he is not going to respect you as a nation that calls itself christian just by mere profession purely because you once upon a time were only look at what he did with solomon towards the end of his life that that like the story of solomon should be the biggest and the most poignant reminder to people that god is not a respect of persons because solomon was chosen he was highly favored the wisest man ever to be in the sight of god he was absolutely adored and yet his paganism his flagrant disregard of god's commandments concerning his foreign wives and his um building of asherah poles in order to please his pagan wives his compromise the lord took away from his life towards the end of it a whole bunch of glory because of that the the end of solomon's life has left a lot of people even creasing their foreheads wondering where is solomon today is he in heaven or is he in hell i don't believe solomon is in hell but i do believe that he was severely judged right here on earth by god for compromising derelicting his duties however imaginative that i'm blessed and highly favored so much he did that as an example to show i guess the future church the future believers that would come that you don't get to just run on the fact that i really really dig you because whether or not i love you i'm not a respecter of persons i will not leave any sin unpunished if i ransacked even your dad david what makes you think you solomon king of peace that i am not going to ransack you too david was a man after my own heart he sinned with Bathsheba and for that I made sure the sword never left his household. He kept on running pretty much all the way up until he died. Yeah, that was a man that was after my own heart. So what then of you who aren't after God's own heart? How much more will the sword never leave your countries, your households, when you're compromising with Bathsheba, when like Solomon you are compromising with your many wives, when, when you are letting a Christian nation infiltrate all this paganism into your faith and then just run with it. And in churches on Sundays, you not only celebrate Valentine's Day, but you are just lodging Christmas trees on Christmas when they ain't got nothing to do with Jesus and you are also out here doing the little bunny rabbit chases funny little kitty games uh, on Easter for children buying them a whole bunch of hot cross buns because it's Easter <laughs> like yo like a <laughs> these are things that i made observations of only when i came to christ because you know you notice things when the holy spirit is coursing through your veins that which you took for granted you now realize goodness we're in trouble and this gangrene has been spreading in the country for how long now guys like i said ever since like, i'm 40 i'm almost 40 i'm gonna turn 40 in august and all my life it's been like this in this country literally you are like the hebrews twisting in the wilderness for 40 years you are
I'm 40 and I've only ever known a pagan version of Christianity and I'm only grieved by it for the past 13 years because that's how long I've been saved. I've been grieved by it for only 13 years, only because I truly got born again, but all in the run up to, no qualms, no qualms, no qualms with all of that mixing absolutely no qualms not only are they celebrating all these pagan practices inside the church but they are speaking about people who died obviously just flagrantly marred by sin having evidenced with her no fruit at all that they were bearing that they were not saved just by mere virtue of the lack of fruit in whitney houston's life one can safely conclude that she was not saved at the end of her life she was a demon's left us because she was he was never of us do you understand yeah and here it is that a whole pastor a lead pastor at a church is doing a sermon one a couple of days after she passes away the first sunday pretty much ever since that event yeah telling parishioners in his uh church that y'all be comforted in the death of this celebrity that you all love i loved her too she's at home with christ why because indeed that's just what rayma does she once said the sinner's prayer she once said the sinner's prayer i mean if christianity is really that easy then guys uh um, i i i of all people am to be pitied we are not saved by works but the scriptures make it clear that we need to strive to enter into the kingdom of heaven for many on that last day will attempt to and not be able strive the bible makes it clear that we need to strive to make our calling and election sure many are called but not everybody's chosen many are called but few are chosen so you have got to not only make sure you're called first price but secondly to seal the deal that your election is also certain you are also chosen because you can be called and not chosen and that basically ascertaining that you are thoroughly chosen involves working out your own salvation with fear and trembling testing to see if you're in the faith who knows let you should lest you should fail do not think you stand lest you should fall checking yourself against the fruit of the holy spirit do i have evidence that i've ever been circumcised in the spirit by this man will know that you're my disciples love one another peter do you love me yes lord feed my sheep so do you have an interest in evangelizing some souls also if at all you love the lord you will keep his commandments keep if you love me you will keep my commandments is that basic so we're not saved by works however works evidence that we are saved faith without works is dead and so if a person is not bearing fruit you can't just preach to people in a church as a lead pastor in that church that they're saved because you're telling them that you can live like whitney houston and go to heaven you're telling them that i don't have to repent from my fornication you're telling them i don't have to repent from my drug use you're telling them i don't have to repent from abusing my wife I just need to keep on saying to God, I'm sorry, every time after slapping her. For real. Is that what we're doing over here? Mm, yeah, that's what happens. This gangrene has been going down for a minute. It's been going down for a minute in this country and I feel as if they were too far gone now. And like I said earlier, uh, if South Africa is going to come around, they're going to have to make like Nineveh, which appears highly unlikely at this point. And if it does make like Nineveh, their recovery will be one where it is that a person survives an amputation. There will be something lost permanently, permanently, like forever. There is no going back to what we used to be. They're not at this stage. The body can be salvaged, but not without amputating. I personally don't even want to be here. I don't want to stay in South Africa. I, I, I keep saying that if the Lord is not rapturing the body of Christ, I have got to live out the rest of my days in another nation. That's it. That's another version of an amputation. Once you have committed a holocaust, on Christians, however mild, you will never recover fully. Do you understand? Once you have had a Christian genocide, the generation that you are will never fully recover. Perhaps maybe your children might inherit a fullness of promise, but you will always have some kind of a limp, an amputation. Fight with God all night like Jacob and he will bless you, but you will have a limp. Look at the rebellion, the excruciating rebellion in the wilderness of the Hebrews. They were given some hard knock amputations. Only the 20 year olds and under were able to go into the land flowing with milk and honey. Everybody else had to die in that wilderness. They had to perish there. There's an amputation, a severity. The children were awarded the fullness of promise and acquisition of, of uh, what it is that the Lord would have them acquire. But those that walked in all of that rebellion, you don't get to burn some Jews in a death camp at Auschwitz and be okay. Like still to this day, people who were awarded amnesty for basically 
taking a deal at tribunal uh, for being the generals of Hitler or whatnot. They were allowed to get away pretty much scot-free like a get out of jail card, but they were never able to live normal lives again. They had to change their names. They had to essentially defect from everything that they had grown up knowing, if at all, they were gonna live normal lives because now the thing that they were was so taboo and so deplorable and so hated that there was no way that they could live normally with basically admitting who it is that they used to be when all of your childhood and all of your young adulthood gets chopped out from history textbooks you'll never be normal again you'll never be okay again and that's what happened to hitler's generals that took a plea deal at the tribunal they got to live for the rest of their lives some of them are still alive today but they can never ever confess that they were those guys they can never they can never confess it they are living lives that are not the original lives that they lived some of them with the severity of shame some of them maybe still harboring horrible um hearts that they always had but can't confess to having had what i'm trying to explain is that this country walked in such a diabolical uh, state for so long that even when you do take a plea deal from jesus christ you're not gonna fully recover for one you're certainly losing me i'm not staying i'm not staying unless the lord raptures the body of christ i'm not staying in south africa i'm not staying i, I like to make a joke saying that johannesburg is going to be like a tourist attraction for my kids when one day it looks like some fishies in an aquarium and i'll say this is where i used to live this is where i used to yeah etc like yeah my kids can come here and visit bayoko table mountain go and swim at durban beach whatever but like come back home to ooh, some other country that's what i'm trying to explain to you. i'm leaving i do not want this country because you don't get to chop the fingers and the toes of people in a torture chamber and expect that they're going to want to live in the neighborhood of the torture chamber what South Africa did to me for years has made it such that I've got too much trauma to continue to live in this country. So I am striving to get out, but I know that I don't have to work like a dog to achieve that because at the end of the day, God is the one that's gonna orchestrate the, the plan to move me out. I'm leaving. It's literally that incredibly basic. I'm getting out and that is your limp. That is the thing. That is the judgment on you as a country for having done this to your faith. That is if you survive. Because even my departure could, it, it evidences that the country is under judgment and one of two things could happen. God departs his saints and then judges the land. Or God departs his saints in spite of the land repenting because his saints don't deserve to stay in that land. Now you gotta rebuild that which you have broken. You shattered a perfectly pr good country. A country that was on the run up, run up, uh, on the come up. It was growing. It was feverishly soaring like a bird. And then you decided to just shoot it mid-air and cause it to choke up blood on the side. And it's only a miracle that it has somehow been resuscitated and patched up and bandaged to live another day, but it will always have a limp. Yeah, I don't, like, it, it would be thoroughly unfair for me to, now that you are coming around, now that you're being defibrillated from the dead, now that you're waking up zombies from the state of deadness that you've been walking around in, for me to now, basically, like, after all of this laborious work that I have put in to get people to, to have some kind of a, a, a bleep, you know? Like, just a small little pulse after they were dead for long. Now I have got to, like, be the overnight nurse too. Now I've got to, like, be in the triage too. Like, I worked for years just doing CPR and I'm bushed. Let somebody else take the reins. Let somebody else n n basically feed you back to health now that you at least have some kind of hope of living. Yeah, let somebody else, because I've been through, I've, I'm, I'm almost 40. I don't have energy for South Africa and what it has done. If at all, it repents good. But from what you must do now is rebuild a country you unnecessarily trashed. You unnecessarily trashed your own country. So now you get your hands dirty and rebuild it while I go like Joshua and Caleb and inherit the land flowing with milk and honey. Y'all need to continue to live in some tents, okay? In the wilderness and live out the rest of your lives in the wilderness because you have made the life of God's people a living nightmare. If you are, if you will be salvaged, then it will be while you are building a country you destroyed. However, if you are judged, it will be, you will finish yourselves off, but God will nonetheless, irrespective of it all, extract his saints out of the room. That billboard with that effeminate man and some bunny rabbit ears i was like hmm yeah of course south africa is one of the only countries in africa that have legalized gay marriage so of course you're gonna get some gay dude 
representing a holiday that belongs to Christians. Some trans man, some man in drag out here representing the holiday of Jesus. That level of blasphemy. And guys, that was not the only thing that grieved me when I was driving. These South Africans that are just letting themselves get taken over. It's only a matter of time before the tribulation gives you exactly what you wanted. A country that hates Christians. A country that hates God. And when a country hates God, the God of the universe, when a country has no regard for the son of man, guys, it becomes despotic. I can't say that enough. It becomes a tyrant, a little sovereign, a little dictator. And dictator re countries please go go live there and tell me when you have stayed there for five years how you feel go and chill in the police state in the surveillance state in the social security state that is china go and live in iran go and develop for a season and hang ten in yemen go and hang ten just for like five seconds in russia and then have yourself conscripted to a war that your greedy king decided to start overnight go and live in countries where dictatorships are basically running the show and tell me if you don't miss south africa the good old-fashioned days when you could actually tease mock sowa ramaphosa in a youtube video and still have a job yeah where you can like i like to call naledi pandor naledi pandemonium because of her stance against israel because she is causing the curse of this country yeah there are countries where you cannot say stuff like that about a politician and be safe and maintain your lifestyle you are automatically from underneath your feet carpets all of a sudden doors get slammed closed on you yeah you live in a country where you can tease julius malem you live in a country where you can tease the politicians that rock up well you know how umusi my money they used to tease him for his wham wham like a uh, lawny english speaking accent yeah that's what's good yeah you can do that you can make jokes Trevor Noah, when he was out in these streets, he used to make lots of jokes, satire about politicians. Yeah, there are countries where you can't do that, where there is no such thing as comedy against politicians, against basically people in influential powers. So in influential positions, able to wield wide powers in a country, despite having that kind of power, somebody's out here dissing you, teasing you, trending on Twitter and still collecting a salary at the end of every month. That is South Africa today. And the day is going to come when in the state that you are maintained in, where you're going to get taken over, and you won't be you won't be able to tease your government anymore you're not going to be able to diss your president you're not going to be able to make jokes about the money in the couch at Palapala, pala, like satire even in newspapers proper gone because ain't nobody trying to diss a dictator a despot go and do a satirical piece in a north korean newspaper and tell me if you don't find yourself in a prison camp maybe even entirely facing beheading or something go yeah you are like christianity you you underestimate what god has done through the faith you 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 underestimate what jesus has achieved in your countries he has given you liberties that are so exquisite that people who live in countries that aren't christian are literally trying to flood to christian nations because it's really hard to live in non-christian countries they they just have no peace in them they, their yoke is not easy their, their their burden is not light they, they are not with the, they're not in the image of jesus christ and so they're forceful they're coercive they shove down religion down people's throats in a way that christ never did yeah so they're always just trying to skip borders into christian countries that's why america has got such a bad problem with the border over there that's why south africa we have a bad problem with the border people who live in countries that are either islamic or there's no religion or there is um what is it? african spirituality is the main deal and end all they're always just trying to come into these countries one they don't have liberties concerning their governments they can't just stand up against them and secondly because there is no god flowing in those streets uh of course society there's no order it's a failed state so there's lots of corruption, lots of theft, lots of uh, everybody does whatever they want, do what they will, for this is the whole of the law. And when there is no law and order, when children cannot be guaranteed to go to school every single year and actively get to grade 12, they move somewhere where it is that they can study from grade 0 to grade 12 in peace. And Christian countries tend to give that guarantee duh, with a stamp of approval and everything. Th that's what happens. Only look at all of these uh, migrants in America that even have skipped the border illegally. How it is that they're being given this uh, like top-notch education, even if they don't have papers. They're being put in schools and trained and basically just given everything they need, even though they're entering into schools there. In fact, they're like, what is this like? Basically unvaccinated for measles. That's what I found out the other day. And so there's like a risk to American kids by foreign kids who skip the border without papers, whose parents just kind of broke through. And now their kids are in schools and they're not vaccinated and they are a health threat a health risk to americans but they're still teaching them they're educating them they're putting them on a an itinerary a protocol to get them vaccinated all that that yeah th that's the reason why they skip the border even without papers 
is because there is a mercy that exists in Christian countries that just it doesn't exist everywhere else. A mercy to a point where even if a person rocks up and doesn't have papers, you're still going to educate them. You're still going to vaccinate them. You're still because those are the principles. Those are Christian Judeo principles. That's what Jesus would do. Even when you come into a country without papers, he would still feed you. He fed the 5,000, 4,000, isn't it? And the same people went and said, crucify him, crucify him. He fed people that hated his message. That's what Jesus would do. And so being his disciples, we achieve that in a land. And then you water down Christ. You you embrace the colorful community, the alphabet mafia, as Vody Buckham likes to say. You, you incorporate a, an effeminate theme into Easter when there is nothing more manly and, un and androgynous about the cross because that's what Easter is about right the death of Christ there's nothing manlier than that and yet here it is that we've got this like dude with like this fluffy Alice band with bunny rabbit ears representing the death of Jesus and the and the resurrection Christ because that's what the whole Easter season is about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ guys like I can't I can't that was not the only blasphemous thing that, were, that I was out here making an observation of um not so much blasphemous but the next thing was just the observation of how it is that South Africa has fenced caged like an incontinent animal that cannot be handled all the power like the electricity like uh whole, like you know these things that they open just to check what's going on there what what yeah they all across Nick Diederich's as I was driving back home, I saw that where it is that those electricity things were at. They had fenced them over and above the original fencing. The original spiky thing that was around them. They over and above it put like a, a barbed wire fence around it. Just plonked it over there. And when I looked at that, I, I remember giggling as my very slow car was going up an incline because you know it's old. I remember just giggling on some, yeah, like that's gonna stop them from doing cable theft. <laughs> that's all I could think yeah that like obviously they put that those there because of cable theft to try and maybe disincentivize them from stealing cables or slow them down I don't know you know so instead of taking uh three minutes to steal cables this time you'll take two hours I remember just thinking these people probably go there with like oh, heavy duty tools just to get their cables to steal them their copper cables because it is what it is they have fenced them in i was like these are the signs of the beginning of a failed state you can barb wire fence all different kinds of things as much as you want but the only reason why here in Riddiput where i stay in Vilkehevel mm, the only reason why for the first time in 2024 the government has seen it fit the local municipality has seen it fit to even cage in prison like a wild animal electricity boxes is because the country is a failed state we've gotten there it's like haiti now we are thoroughly looking like haiti god said that this country is going to end up like haiti if you don't repent and i was like yeah in haiti people do need to kind of fence in everything but even then you know somebody's gonna find some big scissors and just cut through that fence we're gonna just keep on having 24 hour power cuts that are not as a result of load shedding but because of cable theft are causing an even bigger exacerbation of an existing issue and you think that your solution isn't anything other than god which brings me to the final point i saw an advert on youtube of some woman interviewing people like a, a white afrikaans lady on some so this south african problem what what is how do you deal with it so how do you cope with it and uh, this the first guy that responds uh is this white man that then points to the sky and says and i kept on watching the ad because of him pointing to the sky i was like is this a gospel ad this woman then appears clearly rattled and irritated by this man's response or imaginative of him being naive and then she moves on to the next guy this time around it's like a, a black man and the same man the the person then also says this that's where it is that i look to for solution for the south african problem and then this woman keeps on going throughout the community asking people all over what is your way of dealing with the south african problem and all of them just keep pointing to the sky until ultimately she looks up and sees on the roof some uh, construction workers uh, installing solar panels installing solar panels on a house and then this guy one of the construction workers a colored guy looks at this woman on some ma'am the solution for south africans is up there in and of in and of himself he points to the sky and then the camera pans upward and what we see is the sun the s-u-n sun instead of the s-o-n sun that was a deliberate blasphemous advert intended to mock god and that was a new one south africa is not in the habit of mocking god on tv 
that just does not happen and when we start to walk in brand spanking new sins then you're walking in romans one type debauchery inventing new ways to sin literally that ad was manufactured for the very purpose of mocking god the first guy responds and says i look up that's my solution and it looked as if he was talking about god everybody also look up until the final guy is like looking up too but he's installing solar panels saying that our solution in this country to deal with the power cut crisis is not so much the sun s-o-n but the sun s-u-n it, it it was so it is so blasphemous you know that advert on youtube it is so blasphemous and it is such a low blow for this country that it just made me realize which as in we're done for we are done for as a country when you are telling south africans that their solution to the nationwide crisis that we are enduring right now is solar energy you are confirming romans 1 that mankind you are worshiping the creation instead of the creator when it's written in god's word that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and do better basically I will abstain from my wrath and I will heal their land. So your solar panel ideas, whatever. We've got solar panels, but only because my mom had money to afford them. What about small business owners that cannot afford them? What about people in the in the gussies? People who, with just, who are living hand to mouth. They're going to be left out of this whole solar boom. Unless it grows so gargantuan that because of just the sheer scale of demand, they can afford to reduce prices. But that's going to take a minute. Eventually, essentially, the whole uptake of solar power in this country to deal with the power cut crisis is going to disenfranchise the poor already farther than what they already have been disenfranchised. It's going to make their lives even worse because only the haves can afford solar power only. So no, the sun, the S-U-N is not the solution. The S-O-N is a solution because the S-O-N is the father to the fatherless. He regards the cause of the widow and the orphan. He takes on the cause of the oppressed. He loves the poor. So he will, he would never ever give a country a solution that extracts them out of an equation. But according to that advert, they need the S-U-N and not so much the S-O-N. I was like, yeah, of course you've got bunny rabbits on effeminate guys on billboards in a Christian country with nobody raising it as an issue. Of course, your pastors are preaching about valentine's day what does that have to do with the bible uh, well, like in a protestant church goodness martin luther would shake and tremble if at all he were to make an observation of such a thing as that we've got pastors preaching about dead wicked celebrities as being in heaven not encouraging therefore repentance in the parishioners we have got cages around electricity little boxes and on top of that we've got adverts that are overtly blasphemous against god and nobody's screaming sacrilege no one oh i mean except for Garabo. but that's the thing like i'm a remnant when christians like me are a remnant you're in trouble the country's shaking there's an earthquake when a remnant is highlighting the issue god is going to extract noah daniel and job and then you will not struggle to receive your judgment south africa you are done for like is i i tried just the fact that you disenfranchised me you went and you grabbed a whole bubbly woman the life of the party and you made her live in isolation to a point where she now hates being out in public because she just can't stand how people have moved on without her the fact that you've done that out of a woman that was this lively and this much of a social being and made her live in absolute squalor and isolation with no love no mercy no children no husband at the age of 40 i apologize there's no coming back from that and the only reason you did that to a woman is because she held fast to biblical christianity literally there is a causal connection to my life and how it ended up with my christianity it was because i became a biblical christian that you ostracized me and you did not care that i'm so bubbly that i should be in a crowd of people just laughing it up a storm but i'm all by myself and guess who i am among the people who ostracized me professing christians professing christians thrown out of synagogues out of e-churches persecuted by the body of christ until i was without fellowship with brethren in a christian country we are looking at pirates of the caribbean never shall we die unroot unless you humble yourselves and repent and actually start boycotting blasphemous adverts in the run-up to easter in a christian country on our roads that are mocking christ unless you started boycotting adverts that are being released on youtube and on television that are a mockery of god unless you start boycotting as christians in a christian country all that blasphemy ain't nobody coming for you you have kicked god out of your own country and so the lord will take his babies and leave you destitute this country is under judgment is that basic and at this rate at this point where we find ourselves i do not believe complete recovery is possible only recovery but with an amputation it's inevitable seeing as there is some kind of thing remaining to salvage 
Start salvaging it. Repent. Walk away from witchcraft. Stop throwing people under buses. Stop slapping women with Gorobella. Stop thinking you live in an, in an island just by yourself. In a silo. Where you're gonna grab, grab, grab me, 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 me. It's all about me. And think that you're not gonna impact your fellow man on the next, on the left and on the right of you. Do not imagine that you are in isolation being a greedy little rapacious pig. Comprehend that one of you is a million of you. And so you all topple the country underfoot. Repent and take your little limp in your stride seeing as you stood on a landmine. Take your little amputation of an arm seeing as you saw it fit to go and, and play with some flesh-eating bacteria. But at least you have a heart that's beating and a pulse that's going, going, going. At least you are checking on the radar, okay? Bleeping. Start to salvage yourself, South Africa. This here is basically, le these are like letters that I am writing to you. A, a, a demised country, a finished off land that God can salvage if you just make like Nineveh and repent. But do anticipate a limp. Do anticipate an amputation. You are not going to fully recover. The only people that can recover are likely your children or maybe your children's children. But as for you of my generation, millennials, Gen X's, maybe even Gen Z's, dream on. Dream on. But hey, on the other side of the coin, maybe the tribulation is here. In which case, whether or not you want to dream is irrelevant because you're going to be put in such a hard time, such as has never been from the beginning of the world. No, no, ever shall there be again that you will wish that you had listened to me. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Crankade. Peace.